Oyster farming is one of the important industries in the Japanese seafood industry, playing a significant role in the country's economy and culinary culture. Oysters are not only a highly nutritious food source, but also a valuable export product, contributing to the economic development of coastal areas. Oyster farming in Japan has existed for hundreds of years and continues to develop with many technical improvements, contributing to improving productivity and product quality. Since ancient times, Japanese people have known how to exploit and raise oysters in bays, where there are ideal conditions for oyster growth. In particular, the Hiroshima region is known as one of the places with the oldest oyster farming tradition and is still the largest oyster production center in Japan. Along with the development of technology and science, oyster farming techniques have made great strides, helping to optimize the farming and harvesting process. Research on oyster biology, environmental conditions, and modern farming methods have created conditions for the sustainable development of the oyster farming industry in Japan, meeting the increasing demand of domestic and international markets. Oyster farming requires a suitable natural environment where oysters can grow well and achieve high quality. Japan, with its long coastline and favorable natural conditions, has become one of the ideal places for oyster farming. Sea areas with strong currents, rich in nutrients, and free of pollution are important factors contributing to the development of oysters. Japan is located in a temperate climate zone, with four distinct seasons and seasonal temperature changes, creating an ideal habitat for many aquatic species, including oysters. Coastal areas such as Hiroshima, Miyagi, Saga, and Okayama are famous for oyster farming, thanks to favorable climate and terrain conditions. These areas are usually moderately deep, the seabed has a layer of nutrient-rich sediments and the seawater temperature fluctuates between 10 to 25 degrees Celsius, suitable for the development of oysters. Currents such as Kuroshio and Tsushima carry abundant natural food sources, helping oysters grow and develop rapidly. Seawater quality is a decisive factor in the development and quality of oysters. Oxygen-rich seawater, stable salinity and low pollution are necessary conditions for oysters to grow well. In Japan, the seas have a combination of salt water from the ocean and fresh water flowing out from large rivers, creating an ideal brackish water environment for oysters. In addition, the circulation of seawater is also very important. A steady and strong flow of water helps provide enough oxygen and food, while also helping to clean the oyster shells, preventing the development of parasites.
However, marine pollution, especially pollution from industrial and agricultural waste, can seriously damage the growth of oysters and reduce the quality of the product. Japan is home to many varieties of oysters with world-renowned quality. Among them, the Pacific oyster, Crassistry gigas, and the Japanese oyster are the two most popular varieties, widely cultivated and account for the majority of oyster production in Japan. Pacific oysters, also known as Miyagi oysters, are the most widely cultivated oyster variety in Japan and worldwide. This species originated from the Pacific coast and was introduced to Japan in the 1950s. Today, Pacific oysters account for the majority of oyster production in Japan, especially in areas such as Hiroshima, Miyagi, and Saga. Pacific oysters are well adapted to a wide range of environmental conditions, from cold to warm water, from salt water to brackish water. They grow rapidly and can reach commercial size after about 18 to 24 months of culture. Pacific oysters have large shells, thick oyster meat and a sweet taste, and are very popular in Japanese cuisine. Japanese oysters, also known as Kumamoto oysters, are a native species of oyster to Japan. Although smaller in size than Pacific oysters, Japanese oysters have a distinctive flavor and are highly valued in high-end dishes. This oyster is mainly cultivated in the southwestern waters of Japan, especially in the Saga and Kumamoto regions. Japanese oysters have thinner shells and are smaller in size, but the oyster meat has a smooth texture and a rich taste. They grow more slowly than Pacific oysters, usually taking two to three years to reach commercial size. Therefore, the production of Japanese oysters is usually lower, and they are considered a high-end oyster with high market value. In addition to the two popular oyster varieties mentioned above, there are several other oyster varieties that are farmed in Japan on a smaller scale, such as the East Asian oyster, Crassistry ariacensis, and the inland sea oyster, Austria julis. Although these varieties do not account for a large proportion of Japan's oyster farming industry, they contribute to biodiversity and provide additional choices for consumers. Oyster harvesting is an important and complex process that requires precision and care to ensure that oysters are of the highest quality when they reach consumers. This process not only includes collecting oysters from the farms or cages, but also involves post-harvest processing steps such as sorting, cleaning, and storage. 
Below are the main steps in the oyster harvesting process in Japan. Choosing the time of harvest is an important factor that determines the quality and flavor of oysters. Normally, oysters are harvested in winter, from November to March, when the seawater temperature is low. At this time, oysters accumulate more nutrients, the meat is thicker and has a sweeter taste, so this is the season for oysters with the best quality. During the farming process, farmers need to regularly check the growth of oysters to determine the appropriate time to harvest. Factors such as the size, meat thickness, and health status of the oysters are all considered. Harvesting too early can result in oysters that are not at their best quality, while harvesting too late can result in reduced quality as they begin to spawn and lose nutrients. Depending on the oyster farming method, harvesting techniques and tools may vary. Here are some common methods. Harvesting from a platform. For oysters grown on a suspended platform or rope, farmers use specialized harvesting vessels. These vessels are equipped with a crane or reel system to pull the oyster platforms or ropes out of the water. The oysters are then carefully removed from the platform or rope to avoid damaging the shells and oyster meat. Harvesting from cages, oysters grown in cages are usually harvested by lifting the cages out of the water. These cages can be pulled up manually or with the help of machinery. Once the cages are brought to the ship or shore, the oysters are separated from the cages. Manual harvesting, in small or traditional oyster farming areas, oysters can be harvested by hand by diving to the seabed or shallow water to collect them directly. This method is often applied to wild oysters or oysters grown in shallow water. After harvesting, oysters need to be processed immediately to ensure quality and freshness. The processing process includes the following steps. Sorting. Oysters are classified based on size, quality, and shell condition. Damaged or substandard oysters are discarded. The sorting process is often done using modern machinery, which increases accuracy and efficiency. Cleaning, after sorting, oysters will be cleaned to remove mud, algae, and organisms attached to the shell. This process is usually done with high pressure washes or in circulating water tanks. Thorough cleaning helps oysters meet food safety and hygiene standards and improves the appearance of the product. Storage, after cleaning, oysters will be stored at the appropriate temperature to maintain their freshness.
Normally, oysters are stored at a temperature of 0 to 5 degrees Celsius and high humidity to prevent dehydration and keep the oyster meat plump. For the export market, oysters can be packed in ice boxes or transported by specialized cold vehicles. After being processed, oysters will be transported to processing facilities, restaurants, or exported abroad. The The transportation process needs to be done quickly and under controlled temperature conditions to ensure that the oysters retain their freshness and highest quality. For the domestic market, oysters are often transported directly from the farm to seafood markets or restaurants. For export, oysters can be transported by air or sea, depending on the distance and customer requirements. Japan exports oysters to many countries around the world, with major markets including the United States, China, and several European countries. Before oysters are released to the market, they must undergo strict quality and food safety inspections. These standards include testing for drug residues, heavy metals, pathogens, and other toxic substances. Japan has strict food safety regulations, and oyster farms must comply with these standards to ensure that oyster products are safe for consumers. In addition, oyster farms are regularly inspected by authorities to ensure compliance with environmental and hygiene regulations. Oysters are not only an important seafood product in Japan, but also play a major role in the local and national economy. From domestic consumption to export, the oyster industry is a major source of revenue and contributes to the development of many coastal communities. Japan is one of the largest consumers of oysters in the world. Oysters are considered a delicacy and are a key ingredient in many traditional and modern dishes. Dishes made from oysters include raw oysters, kaki, grilled oysters, khaki yaki, fried oysters, khaki fry, and many other hot pot dishes and sushi. In major cities such as Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto, restaurants specializing in oysters are popular, especially in winter when oysters are at their best. Retail stores and seafood markets also play an important role in distributing oysters to consumers. Geoduck, also known as geoduck in English, is a mollusk that lives in saltwater environments, often appearing in sandy beaches or muddy bays. This is a type of seafood with high economic value, popular for its unique flavor and high nutritional content. However, catching geoduck is not simple, requiring technique and patience. Below are common methods and techniques for catching geoduck. Before learning about how to catch it, it is necessary to understand the biological habits of geoduck. Geoduck lives mainly in sand or mud at a depth of 30 cm to 1 m below the ground. 
They have long shells and soft bodies, and can withdraw deep into the ground when they sense danger. Geoduck often lives in areas with clear seawater, gentle currents and high nutritional content. Geoduck has two main parts, a hard shell covering the body and a long neck, often extending out of the sand layer to absorb water and food. When passive, they can retract their necks into their shells and burrow deep into the sand. Catching geoducks requires careful preparation, including tools and knowledge of the area where they are caught. Here are the necessary tools. Shovel or sand digging tool, used to dig the sand around the location of the geoducks. Plastic or metal pipe, used to hold the geoducks necks when digging. or basket, used to hold the geoducks after they are caught. Protective gloves, to protect your hands when digging deep into the sand. Wetsuit or waterproof clothing, used when wading in areas with high water levels. Before catching, it is necessary to determine the appropriate time and location to catch. Typically, geoducks are caught when the tide is low, exposing more sand and mud. Early morning or late afternoon is the ideal time to catch geoducks. Hand digging this method is often used in shallow waters, where geoducks live at relatively accessible depths. Here are the steps. Locate the geoduck, look for signs of the geoduck, usually small holes or patches of soft sand left by the geoduck's neck on the surface. Place the plastic or metal tube, place the tube down where you see the geoduck's hole, and gently press down to create a confined area. Dig around, use a shovel to dig around the tube, slowly exposing the geoduck's body. Be careful not to break or damage its neck. Pull the geoduck up. Once the geoduck's body is fully exposed, gently pull it up from the sand. Use a water pump. This method is often used in deeper waters or when large numbers of geoduck need to be caught. How to do it? Set up the pump. A high pressure water pump is used to spray water onto the sand, creating a strong current that softens and washes away the sand around the geoduck. Locate the geoduck. Like the manual method, you need to locate the geoduck first. Water spraying and sand suction. 
use a pump to spray water onto the sand, simultaneously sucking up the sand and water, exposing the geo ducts. Geoducks collection. Once the sand is sucked up, you can easily see and collect the geoducks. This method is effective for large scale harvesting but requires specialized equipment and can affect the environment if not done carefully. Geoducks must comply with environmental protection regulations and ensure that they do not harm the marine ecosystem. Limit the use of harvesting methods that damage the sand layer and seabed. Respect the minimum size, only catch geoducks that have reached commercial size, avoid catching small geoducks to maintain resources. Geoducks preservation, geoducks after being caught need to be stored in cool and humid conditions to ensure freshness when processed or transported. Diving for geoducks is a technique that requires patience, good diving skills, and knowledge of marine ecology. Here are detailed instructions on how to dive for geoducks. Before starting, you need to carefully prepare the necessary tools and check your health status to ensure safety when diving. Diving suit, use a specialized diving suit, wetsuit or dry suit, to keep warm and protect your body from collision with rocks, sand, and marine life. Diving mask and snorkel, to observe underwater and breathe easily when diving near the surface. Fins, help move flexibly and save energy when diving. Mesh bag, used to hold geo ducks after catching. Digging tools, diving knife, small shovel, used to dig geo ducks from the sand. Diving light, used in case of diving in dark areas or turbid water. Safety rope, to ensure safety when diving deep or diving in waters with strong currents. Geoducks usually live in sand or mud at a depth of 30 cm to 1 m below the ground, so finding the location of geoducks is the first important step. Observing signs on the sand surface, when diving, you can look for signs such as small holes or areas of sand with different colors. These are often where geoducks stretch their necks above the sand to breathe. Use a diving knife to check. Gently use a diving knife or small shovel to dig around that sign. If you feel something hard, it may be the geoduck's shell. Once you have located the geoducks, you can begin the catching process as follows. Digging around. around the geoduck's location, 
gently use a diving knife or small shovel to dig around the geoduck's location, slowly exposing their bodies. Be careful not to damage the geoduck's necks or shells. Holding the neck, when you see the geoduck's necks, you can use your hands or a tool to hold this neck firmly. This prevents the clam from sinking deeper into the ground as you continue digging. Pulling up the clam. Once you have exposed the entire body of the clam, gently pull it out of the sand. Be careful not to break the clam's shell or damage the meat inside. Placing the clam in a net bag. Once you have caught it, place it in a net bag for storage. Continue searching and catching more clams until you are done. Diving safety. Diving can be dangerous if safety precautions are not followed. Always dive with a buddy or in a group to help each other out if necessary. Protect the environment. Do not damage the habitat of clams and other marine life. Of Avoid digging too much sand and do not catch clams that are too small to ensure the resource is regenerated. Check local laws. Some areas have strict regulations on the harvesting of clams to protect marine resources. Make sure you follow these regulations before you begin. After diving and catching geoducks, you need to store them properly to keep them fresh. Keeping in seawater, geoducks can be kept temporarily in a bucket of seawater if you are not bringing them to shore immediately. Packaging and refrigeration, once completed, geoducks need to be carefully packaged and stored at low temperatures, around 0 to 5 degrees Celsius, to keep the meat fresh before processing or shipping. Soak the geoduck in cold water for about 30 minutes to remove any remaining sand and mud in the shell. If necessary, you can use a small brush to gently scrub the geoduck shell to remove any impurities on the surface. Splitting the shell, use a thin knife or a specialized tool to open the geoduck shell. You need to be careful not to damage the meat inside. Removing the intestines, after opening the shell, you will see the geoduck intestines, which are usually darker in color.
You can remove this part if you want, but the neck and body of the geoduck are the best parts to prepare. Fresh geoduck. Choose fresh geoduck, the shell is still closed, the neck still moves when touched. Ice. Used to cool the geoduck after processing. Decorative vegetables, including perilla leaves, mustard leaves, shredded white radish, shredded carrots, optional. Wasabi. A little fresh wasabi or diluted powdered wasabi. Japanese soy sauce, shoyu, used to dip sashimi. Lemon. Add a few slices of lemon if desired. How to prepare geoduck. Clean. Soak geoduck in cold water for about 30 minutes to remove sand and dirt. Use a small brush to gently scrub the shell to remove impurities. Open the shell. Place geoduck on a flat surface. Use a thin knife or shell splitter to open the geoduck shell. Be careful when opening so as not to damage the meat inside. Remove the intestines, use a small knife to cut out the geoduck intestines. The body and neck of the geoduck are the main parts that will be used to make sashimi. Refrigerate, immediately after opening the shell and removing the intestines, soak the geoduck meat in ice water for about 5 to 10 minutes. This will help the geoduck meat become firmer and keep it fresh. Slice. Remove the geoduck from the ice water, drain. Use a sharp knife to cut the geoduck meat into thin, bite-sized slices. You can cut lengthwise or crosswise depending on your preference. Decorate and enjoy. Decorate the plate. On the serving plate, arrange the perilla leaves or cabbage leaves first, then arrange the geoduck sashimi slices on top. You can decorate with shredded daikon and carrots for a highlight. Prepare the seasoning. Place a little wasabi on the plate, along with a small bowl of Japanese soy sauce for dipping. Enjoy! Geoduck sashimi should be enjoyed while it is still cold. When eating, you can dip the geoduck into the soy sauce with added wasabi and enjoy the fresh, naturally sweet taste of geoduck. Geoduck must be very fresh. Sashimi is a raw dish, so choosing fresh geoduck is very important to ensure food safety and preserve the natural flavor. Refrigerate properly. The refrigeration process after processing helps to preserve the crispness and flavor of geoduck, while enhancing the enjoyment experience. Yeah, make sure to like, subscribe, and we'll see you.